Hello everybody, Mr. Pokemon here coming at you with the seventh video in our Platinum Trophy Guide for Dark Souls 3. We're going to be continuing on from where we left off at uh, An Orlando, and we're going to be heading down into the dungeons. One thing I will recommend if you haven't already is equipping our lovely cat ring as it will save you so much time and frustrations as progressing through some of the areas will actually add up to a lot of actual fall damage. Now, as you make your way to the actual dungeons you will be invaded right here so just keep that in mind. There'll be a specific NPC invader called Alva as you'll see there. You can fight him as he's fairly easy to fight. He does use a mixture of crossbow and stuff, but he will, for the most part, simply just run at you. And just like that, he is done. You'll get the Murakumo. Get some souls for your effort. And we can now finally head into the dungeon. Now, in all honesty, I think the best thing that for me to do to help you guys out would be to just go through and just get rid of everything that's a problem, but not get rid of everything that is necessary for you guys to know about. That way you'll just know how to go through the dungeon. So I'm just going to skip to me doing that. And while I'm going to do that, I'm also going to have my princess ring equipped. That way I'll be restoring HP over time. So that way I can take as long as I need to. So we're going to do that. And I will see you all once we are back here. Alright, now as you can see that we are back. We can now make our way through the dungeon. As time consuming as it was, I will try and make sure that I have everything that's up to date. One thing I will say is make sure that you have a torch on hand ready. So basically the first thing that you want to do is head the way I do and we'll grab a few items. One of them is the sorcery. Now do note that there are going to be these jailers that will decrease your health as you go through this area and they will be in plenty of numbers. Now I have uh, I also haven't picked up any keys or any major items. So if you come down here, you'll notice there's still a couple items I didn't grab. More or less because of enemies like this is why we uh, have the torch available. Is It'll get rid of the maggots that are on us. You'll get our sorcerer. Set. And if we come down in here, we can actually fight this maggot boy, which we can actually use to attack him, and that'll actually put him in a kind of a daze. But in defeating him, you'll get the great magic shield, and then we can carry on from here. There's only a few uh, items of actual importance that we really need to grab that you'll know, as the rest of the stuff to grab is more or less just souls and embers and other stuff like that. So from here, what you're supposed to do is run back across this way. There'll be a jailer here at the end of this hall that you will have to defeat. And then you'll come through here. There will be a guy on this wall right here. And then we'll open up the first shortcut, which will be this door right here, so you can just run across. And then you'll want to come down into here. There will be three jailers in this area, one right here, one right here, and one back right there. So if we come in here, we can grab a simple gem. And then we can make our way. Down here. So there is a technical shortcut you can take if you want to skip most of the dungeon. And it's by doing this, coming right here, and then lining up. You can then roll down to that ledge right there at the very bottom. 
I'll try and demonstrate it a little bit later on in the video, but for now we're just going to go through and get everything. So when we come through here, you'll be fighting all these guys. Now, this is a mimic, and I don't have any undead hunter charms, so we're just going to take him out. He will give you a Estus Flask shard, which is pretty nice. Still trying to go for a chance of getting a symbol of avarice, but if you don't get one, like I said, you could save the one at the Pontiff Sullivan Bonfire. That one's pretty easy to do. So when you get to this hall and defeat all the enemies, the first thing I recommend doing is coming and taking this path down right here, as it'll save you uh, some estus and some trouble. But for the sake of things, I'm going to go the intended route, drop down here. Roll this way. Because that jump just leads you to those rocks right there. Then you go down to the intended path. But since we've defeated the giant in the area, we can come over here, get a titanite chunk, get some souls, and be on our merry way. One thing you could also do would be to drop down to right there. But we are trying to do this in the intended order we're supposed to. So if you come in here, you'll see that there's more rats that are going to be trying to mess with you. But if you come all the way back here, there'll be two chests. You can hear some of the basilisks behind me, maybe. But you'll pick up this item. It'll be a cell key. And then this right here is, once again, another mimic. Be careful, though, as this one is actually on his all fours. And then the basilisk will show up. So we can grab our dark clutch ring and we can just leave. So from here, you follow the path. This next area is quite dangerous as it has two big rats that you'll fight in this room right here. They can do a lot of damage, so be careful. But then this area is pain. As there is like at least ten jailers that you will fight. But once you've fought and defeated them, you can come into this first side room across and grab this profaned coal. And then from here, you'll see that there's a area we didn't open up. That's just because we don't have any keys. But in this back corner, you'll find the Alva set, which is pretty cool. Now, uh, you don't need to go into this cell either, as there's nothing of importance. But if we come back over this way, right across, we could find some stuff. The Xanthus Ashes, and back here we'll get a ring, and a little jump scare. So now I'm going to show you the first of a few shortcuts that you can take, or make to get back to uh, certain areas. I did pick up an item over here, which I'll tell, tell uh, and it will be on this corpse right here. It is the Dragon Torso Stone. But if we take this elevator up, we'll unlock the first shortcut back to the starting area. It's not a direct shortcut, but it's basically you'll go across the bridge and you can drop down. And you'll find this locked little door right here, as you'll see across the bridge. But while we're doing that, we can also got, get ourselves a Miracle Lightning Blade, which is pretty nice to grab right now. So see right here, and then we can drop down. Like I said, having the cat ring in this area specifically is really nice. So from here we can now be on our way. Now you will have to backtrack, as I will be doing it three times, but you will only have to do it one time, as I've had to come to this room not once but twice. So now we can come out the other side. And you'll see this ledge right here is the one I was talking about that you land on from up above as a shortcut to skip most of the dungeon. But coming down here, we'll finally reach the profaned capital. Pretty small area. This gargoyle will always land and you can easily just run underneath him as he'll attack at you. And then from here, we can grab our next bonfire and a gesture while we're at it, which is really nice.
as you'll see right here, stretch out. And you also get some undead bone shards, which is really nice. So from this bonfire, if you actually just drop all the way back down and come out this door, we can then be on our way all the way around. You will have another gargoyle attack you right here. He's pretty easy to deal with, but still. So coming into here, what you want to do is take this first left, then take a right. There will be a crystal lizard you can fight right here give you a twinkling titanite then take your first right and then you can finally get this other crystal lizard right here and then if we come all the way back here in this back room there's a corpse that has a gold rust and rusted coin on it which is nice so if you come out here and follow around all the way to this back little area you'll find some blooming purple moss clumps which are really nice then if you drop down there will be a bunch of enemies in this swamp area and I recommend before you do equipping the purple moss clump as this area gives you toxic instead of poison which will drain your health even faster. So if you come back here you'll get the curse bite ring. But if we follow this around over to the left we can go into the bottom of the church which has three very specific tough enemies. One of them you can lure as he's not sleeping yet and fight them and he will give you the Eleanor weapon uh it's, it's, where is it ah it's right here eleonora sorry i'm gonna pop our purple moss clumps and then we can climb up now from here you can go inside and grab or fight another one of those hand boys the best thing i recommend is staying on their sides and to the back of their butt as that's where they're weakest to, as trying to hit their head does less damage. You can find another Mimic right here. These guys are just in abundance in this area for some reason. But, since we have the Cell Sword Wind Swords, will be pretty easy. You get the Court Sor Sorcerer's Staff, and there will also be an Armor Set on the front right here. So the first thing that we're going to do is go up and around. And there will be an NPC that will just be hostile towards you up here on this roof. He'll be wielding a hammer and using sorceries. And defeating him gets you the Logan Scroll. And if you drop down, you can get the Wrath of the Gods. And then we can finally do a continuation of an NPC questline while we're here. And that is for Sigward. So if we come back onto the roof, you'll see this little area right here that you can jump to. Which I'm going to fail at, of course. One of the easiest jumps in the game. My character just didn't want to get up and running. Once you... Really? Okay. Alright, maybe we'll try it like this. There we go. Once you get a good, nice start, you can do it. So if you come up here, you'll use that key you picked up earlier. The old cell key. And you'll be able to grab a gold serpent ring. And you can free Sigurd. He will give you a Titanite Slab, and then once you talk to him and have fully gotten all of his dialogue, we can be on our way. Alright, so from here, if you follow me, we can continue and actually free another NPC from her cell, which is really cool. So when you come up these stairs, do be careful as there are two Jailers hidden right here. They will be waiting to ambush you, so be careful of that. So if you come all the way around here, you can grab this set of keys. The Jailer's Key. I don't know why I'm emoting, but sure. And that'll allow us to go back to that one cell that I mentioned that we'll have to backtrack to. But if you drop down here, this is where you will fight the giant who is normally up right where we are. But we can grab some stuff, the Profane Flame and some titanite shards now if you come into this room over here this will more or less just lead us actually this is the shortcut that'll lead you all the way back to the first bonfire as it's a door right next to it you can only use it specifically the one time i forgot to send it back down but if we come over here okay nothing over there so if we come over here we can find another mimic said these guys are in bulk down here 
and you'll just get some Dragon Slayer Lightning Arrows. Nothing crazy. But if you come up this ladder, we can actually reset back to the dungeon to be able to free Carla much quicker, which is really nice. As if you've been going through and defeating everything and not dying, this is a lot of time save. Nothing to grab while we're here though, but we can technically do this. If I could ever make that jump. I don't remember if it's anything specific. Um, I'll probably go back and then figure it out. But now we can actually come back here and go save Carla. And then be on our merry little way back to the profane capital. Whoops. Almost missed my turn. Do be careful though as there is one more jailer in this area on the right. They'll be in this little hallway right here like that. So if you come in here you can actually save her, offer her help, save her nonetheless, and then she'll go back to Firelink Shrine. Now, Carla's is a specific case as she sells a mixture of everything from miracles, pyromancies, and sorceries, and hexes that um, you can't normally get from other NPCs as they won't take the uh, tomes because they're, I guess, filthy in a sense. But now we can finally be back on our way to the profane capital and can finally do that. We can just ignore this guy here. And then finally head down to the next fight. So we're going to rest up. Alright, so from here you can see the la ladder of impending doom that leads a very long way. If you would like a bow, you can drop down onto that debris off the side. And there will be, I think it's on the first one that you can land on, there will be a bow and arrow right there. But we're just going to be on our merry way. As I don't like having fireballs thrown at me. So if we come in here, there'll be specific enemies that will be just constantly throwing fireballs at you. These maidens over here. Do be careful as they can actually deal quite a bit of damage. They're, they're pretty similar to the Jailers in terms of design, except they just have differences, of course. As they spew fire. So do be careful of that. But clearing them out is, I think, necessary. But if you want to just go into the boss, it'll be on the other side. As you'll see, these golem knight things are pretty easy to fight. But as you see, there's a whole horde of these priestesses. And there is another... I believe there's another... Yeah, Gollum Knight right there. But there's, from what I know, there's nothing of noteworthy in these chests in this room. The back two over there are mimics. I'm just going to point that out now. So if you want to go and try and farm those as well for uh, Symbols of Avarice, you can. So the first thing I recommend doing when you are coming here is just to unequip your weapon. You'll have a cutscene. And you'll have a friend to help you with this fight. So the first thing I recommend doing is just running straight at him. And run to his throne. To be able to grab this sword up here. The Storm Ruler, which they then change to make it to where no matter what your stats are, you can use it. So to use it, you hold two-handed, hold L2. You'll then charge it up, like so. And then you can slash a giant blade of air. 
I recommend backing up a bit and then resetting. As he's about to power up now with the power of flames. You and Sigurd should be enough to do this fight. If not, that's quite unfortunate. But this is the end of his quest line. But in doing so, you will get a second Storm Ruler, and then you also will be able to get his armor set. Yorm does hurt. Like I said, you can stagger him, then recharge, and back up. Don't know why it's swung there, for sure. Are you kidding me? Recommend maybe taking off a piece of armor. Just to make your life a little bit easier. Sadly though, having um, Secret dead already ruins the damage that we were able to inflict. Somehow I'm alive. Probably not. Oh. Close, close to death. Good thing his little stun there doesn't do any actual damage. But we should be done now. And once Yorm is defeated, I definitely recommend immediately swapping back to your Cell Sword Twin Blades, as you will be immediately teleported to the next area but this is where I'm going to end this video and immediately have to start the next one all right so actually I won't be able to immediately have to start the next video so I'm just gonna put my helmet back on all right, but yes. Yeah, so hopefully these guys have been helpful. Um, I'm just, I, uh, I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.